Jamaica is developing rapidly into a flourishing industry. The dairy farmer has many things in his favor. The climate is ideal, and there are large areas of good grazing land where some of the best kinds of dairy fodder grow well. Imported grasses grow readily and can be easily cultivated. They provide ideal food for the stabled animal and ensure a high milk yield. The marketing situation is encouraging. At present, the manufacture of condensed milk is causing a demand for more milk, and with the possibility of the production of evaporated milk, even greater quantities will be needed. Other smaller concerns are extending the market. They use a fair quantity of fluid milk to meet the daily needs of the people. The many foods made from cow's milk form a large part of the meals of adults and children and provide refreshing and nourishing drink during Jamaica's hot, sunny days. Householders require an everyday supply of fresh, pasteurized milk, and the good habit of drinking an adequate quantity is practiced daily by an increasing number of people. Small milk vendors are trading too, and are finding demand greater than supply. In some schools, nutrition plans are drawn up to show that milk is the basic food. To meet all these demands, Jamaica's milk production must be doubled and a constant supply maintained. Here is a typical country district. As in many others, dairying is an important industry in which many people are employed. The government effort to improve the herds is only partly successful because the farmers have not yet realized that improved breeding is not the only thing that matters. Without proper management and care of the cattle, all the results of good breeding are lost. The animals are allowed to roam over hilly country where they barely get enough roughage for bodily maintenance. Often they have no proper shelter from burning sun or heavy rain. As a result, their milk yield is small. No provision is made for a supply of water. Instead, the animals are taken at odd times on long journeys to some water supply. Again, the farmers do not practice the proper methods of milking. They allow the calves to run with the mothers. And this is a bad custom. Calves should be weaned two or three days after birth and be fed quite separately. Unclean milking is a source of great danger. The dirty hands and dirty clothes of a farmer can easily make the milk impure and so endanger the health of the consumer. There is no proper protection against hair from the farmer's head or dirt from his clothes falling into the milk. The fully open milking vessel does not stop impurities from entering the milk, and much valuable time is lost in emptying a small vessel into a larger one. In milking, it is painful to the animal to pull the teats with two fingers. Such harsh treatment causes the cow to give less milk than it really can give, and in time may even injure the other. Sufficient attention is not paid to the cleanliness of the animals. Dirt on their bodies affects their health, and this will affect the milk yield. Wet milking is another bad habit. All these wrong practices must be discontinued if our milk industry is to improve. All 
some forms of unusual or harsh treatment will lower the milk yield. Milking in dirty surroundings is a breach of health regulations. Insanitary conditions make milk a dangerous enemy instead of a friend. The situation is made still worse by using unclean milking vessels. These bad methods have only one result, a small milk yield. Ah, it's very disappointing. But it's you who are to blame. It's your methods that are at fault. This worried farmer cannot answer the question that always troubles him. My cow is a well-bred animal, yet why does she give so little milk? With no answer to his problem, he sets out to meet his fellow farmers who pool their milk for delivery to the condensary. But he's not the only one. Others are very worried too. They have the same experience. They have well-bred cows, but still they only get very low milk yields. Farmer Brown, their group leader, is very worried about the poor production. Every day it is the same, just 12 quarts in all from six farmers. This cannot go on. Efforts at improved breeding seems for them a total failure. An answer must be found. Ah, here comes the agricultural instructor to pay them a visit. They'll put their troubles to him. Brown welcomes the instructor and at once begins to tell him of their troubles. Can he help them? Look, says Brown, we have good animals, yet every day for over a year now, we've been getting only this small amount of milk. What can be wrong? But the instructor knew very well. They had never followed his advice. He invites Brown to go with him on a visit to a prosperous dairy farmer. He may learn something. The hope of finding an answer to their problem cheers them, and they agree to send Brown as their delegate. Next morning, Farmer Brown met the instructor who had planned to visit Farmer Johnson's holding. It would be a good opportunity to show Brown a wise farmer at work. They start out early to reach Johnson's farm during the morning milking. Johnson greets the instructor who introduces the two farmers to each other. All walk towards the dairy shed and stop to look at the animals. Lovely cows indeed, mutters Brown. They look just like mine too. The instructor agrees that the cows are of the same breed as Brown's. The cows of each farmer had come from the same livestock improvement center. Brown admires the animals. They look much cleaner and better kept than his Over at the milk room, the instructor explains the importance of keeping it fly-proof and dust-proof. Ben Johnson shows Brown his milking utensils. He explains that a partially covered and seamless milk pail is essential for maintaining the purity of the milk. And another important thing is the wearing of a cap and apron whilst milking, or handling the milk. The cap prevents loose hairs from the head from falling into the milk. 
Brown and his farmer friends had never bothered about these things. The overall apron stops any dirt from the clothes falling into the milk. Johnson prepares to wash down his cows and gathers the washcloths and fills his bucket with clean water. The instructor explains that this shed was built by Johnson, quite cheaply, with the aid of a grant from the farm improvement scheme. Besides being used for milking, the building shelters the animals from sun and rain. Inside the shed, Brown is shown the simple working of the wooden stanchions. Next, he is shown the trough into which the feed for the animals is placed. Brown is very interested. Like many other wise farmers, Johnson has found he gets better milk yield if he lets his cows eat and drink while they're being washed and milked. Concentrates can be bought cheaply and should be fed to the animals in addition to the grasses. At the feed room, Johnson goes away to finish his milking, while the instructor shows Brown a bag of locally made concentrated feed. Brown is told that since Johnson started feeding his cows and concentrates every day, he has been getting a higher milk production. While Johnson secures the last cow in the stanchion, Brown attempts to go near the animal, but is stopped. The instructor tells him that cows are very temperamental with strangers. Brushing off loose hairs and dirt from the cow's hindquarters and thoroughly washing the udder and teats are very important. Not only do they ensure clean milk, but they stimulate the animal and make her give freely all the milk she has stored up. A contented cow always gives more milk. After washing his hands and getting his milk pail, Johnson begins milking his last cow. But before doing so, he first checks to see if the animal has contracted any disease in her udder that may affect the purity of her milk. Johnson's way of milking is very different from the old two-finger method. While giving a downward pull on the teats, he applies a gentle pressure on them using all his fingers. No need for wet milking here. Brown has never seen anyone milk a cow like this before, and he's surprised at the short time Johnson takes to milk one cow. Having finished the milking, Johnson and his visitors go back to the milk room. He has already measured the milk from the other two cows, and now, with the help of the instructor, he measures the amount from the last cow. As the milk is measured, Johnson pours it through a strainer made from a piece of muslin. Straining like this makes sure that not even the slightest bit of dirt enters the milk. This stage of the work is very interesting to Brown. Such a large amount of milk from one animal is something quite new to him. 
All this from one animal. In his notebook, Johnson keeps a day-to-day -day record of his milk production. Farmer Brown is amazed at Johnson's high yield. He congratulates Johnson on his achievement. His own entire group of farmers had, only on a very few occasions, produced that amount of milk in one day. They then walk to a wooden stand placed beneath a tree. Heat spoils milk, so Johnson every morning puts his milk container in this cool place to await the truck from the condensary. Every day, Mrs. Johnson helps her husband with the sterilizing of the milk utensils. This is necessary to keep them always clean and free from germs. And no expensive sterilizer is needed for this. While this goes on, Johnson is hard at work scrubbing down the floor of his shed. Everything must be clean in this dairy work, and cleanliness has become a habit with the Johnsons. Johnson's silo was the next place to visit. Fresh grass is always hard to get during the dry season between January and March, so Johnson has provided for a constant supply of feed in his small ground silo. Last year, he had stored layers of grass in it and had poured a layer of molasses between each layer of grass. So now, this is ready to be fed to the animals. Brown remembers that his group of farmers is, even now, finding it hard to get fresh grass for their cows. So this is the secret, mutters Brown, as they walk to the paddock. Johnson cannot afford a regular chaff cutter, so he cuts up what grass he has with his cutlass. He puts some silage into the trough and mixes the cut grass with it. The instructor tells Brown how necessary it is to have a constant supply of water nearby for the animals to drink. As Brown watches Johnson mixing the feed, he is curious to know where Johnson has got such lovely grass at this time of the year the middle of the dry season, and Johnson invites him to follow him. Johnson points out one of the grass barriers he has cultivated between his rows of banana trees. Brown is told that the surest way to have fresh feed all the year round is to cultivate it. Nothing is wasted on Johnson's farm. The manure he gets from his animals is used on his crops. Farmer Brown bids goodbye. With the knowledge he has gained from this visit, he has found the answer to the problems of his own fellow farmers. Their old methods are to blame. The only way to a higher and consistently good milk yield lies in the proper care and the proper management of the dairy cow.